Okay. So Jonathan Blow made this man quit his job for real. All right, let's listen to this. What would I say to someone starting their programming career at a web company using JavaScript? Okay, I'm very serious about this. Okay, so every single person who is listening is pretty much just got called out and is ready to get stomped on. Okay, so everybody, are you ready? Are you ready? Find a better job immediately. Get wrecked. Immediately where you are not using JavaScript because this will affect your long-term development as a programmer. The beginning of your career when you're young and have a lot of energy is very important. You need to use it effectively because it'll determine your trajectory for the rest of your life. Okay. If you I actually really liked this take. I know JavaScript is recommended as the beginner's language. But there is something very valuable about struggling. I remember my first couple years were spent on robots. And there was a lot of struggle. It's where I learned and loved printf debugging. Uh, it's where I've I developed a lot of the ways I do things now is because of it. Um, there's definitely some very good parts to this that he's absolutely right on. Your desire and your ability to push through difficult things is definitely going to be proportional to how excited you are. And people typically are more excited when they're young. Just real talk. You're just, you genuinely are more excited when you're young than when you're older. Not saying that's always true for everybody, but I think we can agree that that's generally true. If you start a career at a company that gives you mediocre things to do, you're going to turn yourself into a mediocre web programmer. That's just what happens. Okay. You need to go outside that. Do anything. Go work at SpaceX. Go intern at SpaceX and bring people fucking coffee. That'll be better for your career long term than doing web development at a web company. Okay. That is a bold ass statement. <sighs> I want to think about that more because I think I, I, I mean, generally, I understand the logic, which is the more challenging and the more difficult the things you have to solve on the daily, the more you're going to rise to the occasion. I think that makes sense. SpaceX is known for being intensely difficult. So I, I, get, the, I get the idea. Like I'm, I'm definitely not dunking on his idea. Now, I know some people hate that they just hate the Elon, so they can't they can't even they can't hear the concept, right? They hear the word Elon and they're just like ah, 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 like I don't care. And so I can I can I can try to eat the fish and spit the bones here. Uh, it's just a different way of saying that you should always be the dumbest person in the room. Sort of. Sort of. The uh, that's a very hard I've never liked that phrase either. I've never liked the phrase, like, don't be the smartest person in the room or be the dumbest person in the room or whatever, because inevitably it leads to all rooms being empty. Um, meaning that people will constantly use, like, how often are you, if you are the smartest person in the room, should you quit? Well, the problem is, is that, I mean, think about all the, you know, you, the, the problem with that statement is that no place could ever survive purely on that mentality. Right. Once you become the best, you just have to move on. Now, I just typically am just the dumbest by just by the sheer dint of who I am. Um, nonetheless, Jonathan Blow, you can't really make fun of him for using Windows. Uh, he also was using uh, he was a heavy, heavy Unix man in the 80s and early 90s. So I don't I don't think I don't think you're going to win that argument per se. Just saying. Again, my rant about imposter syndrome is it's not, so there is a real psychological effect called imposter syndrome, but that's not what everybody on the internet is talking about, right? Ooh, I cannot wait for this. I cannot wait for Twitter, Twitter shambles. Here we go, people. Twitter shambles. You're not even good enough to have imposter syndrome. People on the internet seized that name and used it inappropriately for their accurate feeling that they don't know what they're doing at their job. Okay. <laughs> Did you just hear what he just said? 
the accurate feeling of you not knowing what you're doing because you are accurately un <laughs> because you are not actually you're not an imposter. You are just not qualified. <laughs> Oh no. Diagnosis skill issue syndrome. Okay. Most people are bad at their job and don't know what they're doing. That's not a syndrome. That's an accurate depiction of the situation. And so to pretend it's not true, people want to pretend it's not true that they're bad at their job. They want to pretend that they're actually good and it's just a mental issue. It's just confidence or something, right? No, it's just your, if you're bad at your job and your brain is telling you you're bad at your job, then just pay attention to that and try to figure out how to get better. The more time I actually really did like that take that, that was honestly a really great take. If you think you're bad at your job, you should be trying to analyze which parts you're bad at and how to get better. Right, like that's actually, that's, that's like just genuinely great advice. That's genuinely good ass advice. Go crack open a book, get better. And now, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's shockingly, shockingly great. The inverse of that also is that someone believed in you enough to hire you to set you in that seat despite knowing your experience. Meaning that they think you can do it. So if you just put those two things together, you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you should, you should be able to do this. Time you spend working in that space of your approximation to the thing that you want, the more time you, you spend becoming an expert in the field of this specific application that you're making, the better you get at that subfield of programming. And the better you get at that subfield, the better your decision making about technical issues in that field is going to be. So if you make- I do think that this completely goes away when we're talking about front end frameworks because they keep inventing them. So they just keep getting better at creating more and more abstractions. So I'm not sure if that that is always true, but I guess it is true. They are better at creating abstractions, but is it actually better? I don't know. Hard decisions later, they will be made better both by a more skilled person and with more contextual information than if you make those hard decisions early on okay so deferring these kind of decisions is actually important for good craftsmanship in some cases it sounds paradoxical because you would think good craftsmanship is just you see a problem and you like relentlessly solve it whenever you see one but i don't find it to work that way for new program I actually really I actually really like that take a whole bunch. There is something about just time in the saddle that is just one of the most important parts of your day job. Just seeing the same problem four times, you can do a really, 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 really good job your fourth time. And it also kind of goes to show that you should write software in such a way that you have to kind of plan for its longevity. Like if you know it's not gonna be a super long piece of software or you know you're gonna have time to kind of rethink some of your assumptions, and then it's better to get the speed, to get the experience, to understand what you're building than it is to just try to solve it correct the first time. You know, you de you, there's definitely there's definitely like, there's definitely a, a gambit you have to play here. Programmers, what would I broadly say about choosing a career path in programming? The same thing I always say, not time in Seattle, time in the saddle. Okay, you don't wanna spend any time in Seattle. Okay, you're gonna get mugged. You're gonna die. Which is be careful what you choose, especially when you're very young, because when you're young, it's the time when you're really learning and the time when you're still defining yourself. I mean, you're always still defining yourself, but when you're young, you're especially doing that because you have less history behind you. And so if you go somewhere mediocre, and you learn from people who are doing mediocre work, you're going to be defining yourself as someone who doesn't do things that are particularly good or particularly special. That's just reality. People don't like it when I say that that way, but that just is what it is. That's what happens. Um, if you're lucky, you can break yourself out of that later, but better never to be in that situation. So, 
choose where you work and who you work with very carefully. Because there hasn't been selection. That's a very, very good piece of advice right there. Honestly, uh, I actually said no to a master's because I did not respect the person who was giving me a master's at a full ride, free everything. And I said no. Um, and the reason was exactly that, which was that no matter what, you become like who you spend your time with. And so I, I, I wanted to be very careful about that. And so I am careful about who I spend my time with. And that's one of those things. Because no matter what, no matter how much you, you, no matter how much you, you don't want it to be true, you will be like the people you surround yourself with. That's not true. What's not true? You don't ever become anything like, you, you don't become like the people you surround yourself with. Not true. I am smarter than Aristotle and Solomon and everybody else behind me who's ever existed who's written about this. You can decide. Um, good luck. Good luck with that one. It's your decision. Yeah, again, good luck with that one. Good luck with that one. Well, way, way to fight against like just collective human <laughs> and wisdom for, for 3,000 years plus in writing. Yeah, don't worry. I'm better than that one. This is what we refer to as a skill issue. Good luck, Staben. Good luck. Pressure on programming culture. Whether or not you believe me about whether the current culture is right or not, you could at least expect that there's not that much reason for it to be right. There's like a very mild constraint that your program does kind of have to run, and that's a reality check, but that's getting looser all the time anyway. Like look at how many more and more programmers are hired just to make a simple program run now, right? Like people, people spend years at web companies working on individual web pages that are about the complexity of something I would program in basic when I was in high school in like a I mean, this is one of the problems of, of abstractions. We, we've, we've tried to make everything abstract, everything fall into these various patterns, and we just don't do the obvious thing, which is the straightforward thing, which is just build the actual thing instead of building all these abstractions around it. Like, you don't have to have a generalized everything. Sometimes you can just build the thing. A couple weeks or a week or something, right? It's just crazy at this point. I think it's still possible to pivot later. Oh, we're back. We're back here. Okay, we're back here. This, <laughs> whatever this graphic is, he has some spicy takes on whatever this graphic is. You're on in life to try and pursue what you feel is your true passion while taking a more financially stable choice in the present. No, I think people tell themselves all the time they're going to do that, and then they just age into their financially stable choice. That's just what happens. Um, I think... I think either you're willing to take risks or you're not. And your propensity for taking risks will only be reduced as you age. You'll never... This is very true. You know, it's not like you get 10 years older and feel like way more radical than you did when you were 23. That's not how that works. Okay? <laughs> it really doesn't. When you're 43, you'll have way, way more reasons to be conservative than when you were 23. So if you don't learn to take risks now, you will not do it later. If you have- That's, that's also very good advice. Very few people are different than that. And there's always gonna be a person that's like, oh, I'm way, I'm way more risk taking than I was when I was 23, now that I'm 43. Um, but typically, as you get older, you get, you get, more and more kind of you 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 think about your choices and maybe maybe it's not even risk taking is the right term maybe you're just more wise to see that some risks aren't worth taking right some risks as you get older you'll go oh yeah yeah that that doesn't that just doesn't make any sense i'm better and that's wisdom i mean that's just generally wisdom right wisdom is not the ability to solve a tough problem but knowing which tough problem to solve that's like an easy way to state it uh, and so like, there's always a tough problem. There's always a risk you can take, but which risk is the right risk to take? And obviously having kids and family and other financial responsibilities, 
you know, you got to think a little bit more about it. You have money of any magnitude and you have a theory about how to do something productive, then you should invest that money in your own theory. Because, I, like it. I mean, if you believe it has a good chance of being right, because you're most in control of that. And there are fewest middlemen skimming off of that, right? So the highest return comes from you investing that money in your own idea. Um, so all these things like putting it in an index fund or, you know, a mutual fund or whatever, or bonds, that's all. F he forgot housing. For if you don't have an idea of yeah, that's how fair. to make any money, which is fine for people who don't want to have an idea or don't want to take any risks. But if you do, there are better things to do. The people who I mean, that's not terribly bad advice. That's fine advice. If you don't, if you don't want to take the risk yourself, and you'd rather try to put it into something that's more stable and and sort of there's there's different investments for each person. Index funds are for boomers. Uh, yeah, I mean, I get that people put their money into various types of funds. Uh, each fund has a different level in it. But he is right. Like if you want the greatest potential for every dollar you put in, it is b b like investing in yourself to create something that you believe is better than everybody else, right? Like if you believe you can create the greatest version of Twitter, whatever that version is, right? I know there's always a new version of Twitter that's killing off Twitter. Twitter's dying this week. It's going under. Mastodon's going to get it, right? I get it. But if you think you got that best one ever, it is better. It is better for the potential. Now, the realization is where it all goes wrong, right? That's where it all goes wrong. You might not realize anything and lose all your money. I realized negative dollars when I did my last startup. <laughs> Potential, huge. Realization, negative. <laughs> it hurts. Seed, do stuff that nobody else was doing because the other people talked themselves out of doing the thing, right? That's the secret that you have to know. Everybody is talking themselves out of success all the time. And I'm not trying to sound too self-help guru-y about that because self-help people give me the creepies, but it's Agree true. Agree with everything. People talk themselves out of success every day. <laughs> um, it's weird. Like, why would human beings do that? But they do it. Once you learn to see it, you see it all the time. All right. But you need to stand out from. I like that. I like that last one. Uh, there's a typical phrase that I think is one of my favorite phrases I've ever heard, which is seizing defeat from the clutches of victory. Like I, I, I do see this pretty regularly and kids are just terrible at that. They'll be doing something right. And then just like, can't help, but to start doing the wrong thing. You're like, you got it, man. Just slow down. Just don't do it. It's just like, it's just, you can't even help it. You can't even help it. You just watch it. The rust motto. It's the rust motto. Rust literally has everything to do the right thing. They just got to just, what are you doing? What are, what are you doing, Foundation? How did you create the craziest, the, the just the craziest setup? Like, what are they doing? It's wild. Thank you, Lightestar. From other people in order to really succeed at a lot of things. And people are afraid of standing out from other people because when you stand out from the herd, you get taken down by a mountain lion or whatever, right? Um, so people have strong resistance to that. Certain people, other people don't, right? Um, people with high risk tolerance don't have those aversions to the same degree. And so, um, you might be doing that. I don't know. I don't know you. Um, I don't know what your personality is like, but you might be doing that. You might be just looking for ways to not succeed while thinking that you tried your hardest. That is definitely a thing that people do. For me. For me, there's not that much question that I'm going to finish the things that I do because I've learned the secret of that. Ooh, uh, I, I should probably pay attention to this section. Everybody pay attention. Um, Finishing the things you start. Here we go. Uh, and the secret of that is you just do the stuff that you say you're going to do.
It literally is the secret. There is only one way to do the things you're supposed to do is by doing the things you said you were going to do. Like that's honestly, that is, that is as good of advice as you'll ever receive. If you think that there's some magic bullet to make you more likely to like to finish a project. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the answer is just do it. It's really not hard, but most people don't do it, right? Okay, this is the sad fact, right? Most people are bad at programming. Most people who are good at programming are really busy. They're not usually the people giving you advice about how to program. By Sturgeon's Ooh. law, almost all advice you'll see on the internet about how to program is bad. So, I mean, if you have absolutely no idea how to program, then I guess you go on the internet and you look for a little bit, like enough to get traction. But if you know how to program a little bit, you probably know better than the average advice on the internet. All right. So w what you need to then do is get better so that you have enough judgment capability to sift the good advice apart from the bad advice. And the only way to do that is to program. I really, I did, I did actually really like that. I maybe, maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't catch that one, which is someone who is, he started off by saying, Someone who's good at programming is really busy and then goes into advice. And what he was saying is that when you're listening to people who are regularly giving out tons of free programming advice and all this, you are listening to people that aren't busy. <laughs> Which means by his definition, they're, you might not be listening to the best advice. That's pretty good. It's a, it's a bit of a funny paradox. Which means that whenever you're getting, like, how often do you get code reviews? And the people that seem to be the most active on code reviews. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's an interesting kind of paradox. It's, a, it's an interesting problem. Anyways. You're not really the best since you're here with us. Absolutely, I'm not the best. How do you level up as a programmer who's been primarily working with web frameworks? Stop doing web programming. Web programming is bad. It will make you a bad programmer. Stop it. Work on other things in other domains. That is step number one. I think that's good advice. It's like saying, how do I become a better athlete when what I do is I sit around with all the guys on the couch with the bags of Cheetos and we practice throwing the Cheetos into each other's bowl, which is kind of like playing basketball. And it's like, no. <laughs> Just play basketball. That's that's funny. Okay, I like that. I like uh, that 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 the analogy pretty funny but i like that i actually like i generally i generally like that whole thing beer pong is a real sport is it i get this shit all the time how do i get better at judo <laughs> do more judo dude it, the, the answer is almost always time in the saddle anytime you hear someone how do i get better at x they're almost never asking you to say the simplest and obvious answer which is just do the thing that's how you get better okay because yes there are some things that you can't quite do that with like golf you need to have someone show you the right way to do it then you go do the right way ten thousand times like that's just how it works is that you have to have some hint as to how to do better, and then you just do it constantly, over and over again, every day, always. And that is actually what I'm going to go do right now because I have a very fantastic project that needs some wrangling, and I would like to do some wrangling. <laughs>